Okay, in in the last segment, I said there was we went to church with one other couple. It was it was two other couples. Okay, so where was I? Big mistake. Um, we walk into the church, and I felt I felt at home. I felt like I knew these people, and it it was wonderful. It um it was more of a um. They believed in all the gifts of the spirit, and the other church we went to didn't. And I I thought. It was probably a good idea to go to a church where they believed in all the gifts of the Spirit because the previous one didn't even believe me when I said we had a demon in the house. And I'm like, after all, what kind of church are we going to? So we, we tried that. We'd never been in a church like that before. And um, it, it seemed okay at first. And um, long story short, the pastor of the church had a degree in psychology and uh, he knew how to work us, what he did. We, on Friday nights, us two couples would get together at one of our houses and we would have game night, we would have Bible study. It was like we had our own, our own home group, even though our church didn't do that. We, we were doing that on our own. And we prayed together. And um, so we go there and the first, the very first Sunday, what do you know, um, our friend Jim, he had the strongest personality. He got saved. Well, he was already saved. For some reason, he thought he wasn't saved, and he went forward, and he got saved. And after that, that affected Jim's pride, and that made him an expert over us other two couples. And um, he w it's like he joined their team to try and break us all down to think we weren't saved. So... Um, they got my husband doubting. They got the other couple doubting. They got my girlfriend doubting right away. And they worked on us. And we, we stopped getting together on Friday nights. And what they did is they assigned two couples to Jim and Cindy. And they would uh, get together on Friday nights, fun night. And they would, so, so that meant we couldn't get together with them. And then the other two couples, I think we were assigned like, a Tuesday night and the other couple was assigned a Thursday night so we weren't even getting together anymore they had effectively um, cut us off from each other there was no communication which was pretty cultish if you ask me and so we weren't allowed to go to church on Wednesday nights for some reason later on I found out why well my friends Jim and Cindy had four teenage children and I was pretty close with them. The one little girl babysat my kids the first summer. And because um, I, I didn't work after that, long story. But um, I only worked the one summer where I needed a babysitter. And, and that was only for a couple hours a day. So um, I had something new happen to me that had never happened before. Here I had dealt with a demon in my house. And I got rid of it. And um, the Lord spoke to me, and I shared that with the church. You know, I, I thought they would understand. They were spirit-filled. You would think they would understand, but no, they did not. Um, I told them about the Lord talking to me and giving me a Bible verse. And I was told, basically, God doesn't talk to people, that that was a demon. They tried casting a demon out of me. And, you know, nothing happened. And then... Um, Shortly after that, when I, there was two men in the church, the pastor and his associate, assistant. And um, when I would talk to them, I started feeling something. It, it, it seemed to come, like, I don't know if I was looking into their soul through their eyes. I, I just was getting something off them, and it was horrible. And um, I started having episodes at night again. I wasn't, I wasn't being paralyzed or anything, but I woke up every night at about two in the morning with the most evil, horrific sights of children being murdered, molested, raped, murdered, you name it, everything horrible you could do to a child, I would see it. And... And then I would go to church and I'm talking to these two men and I realized I was getting the same thing from them. And I'm not saying they were killing people, children and doing stuff to them. I'm not saying that. 
I think there's a spirit. There was a spirit attached to that. I, I do think that, well, I know there's a lot of stuff going on with children, with child trafficking and with the, the ritual killing they're doing and the dream curl. I'm all caught up on that. And um, <coughs> so later on, very long story short, we did end up leaving the church and we left with one set of, one couple. They left. It was a miracle. Long story. Maybe someday I'll tell it. Um, the other couple stayed. And the other couple that stayed, I ended up talking to their daughter that babysat my children. And she told me on Wednesday nights, when we weren't there, that they were cursing us. I was a real hot topic at that church. They were getting ready to shun me like they did another woman. And they just about had my husband. They were working real hard on my husband. They even asked how he felt about divorce. So, um, <clears throat> because I was the only one they didn't break down to get to doubt their salvation. And um, I was to the point of a nervous breakdown. We were still going to the church and I was still trying to run my business and take care of my children, get my children to school. And I had stayed up all night working on a job and we were taking it to deliver it one morning. And my horses had gotten out. And instead of getting to do the delivery when we did, it, it, it made us late. And on the way down there, my husband had reached the point where he wasn't really listening to me and taking me seriously anymore. He was really trying to do the right godly thing. And he was convinced I had serious problems. And I, I said to my husband, I said, I said, do you think your dad would like that church? Because we think, we think his dad goes to a cultish church. And, and he said, yeah, I think he'd like it. And I said, do you think this church might be a cult? And, he, and he, he didn't answer me right away. And then he said, maybe we should stop by the bookstore on our, after we deliver, make the delivery. So we walk into the bookstore and we ran into a man that my husband had met previously when he was taking a missionary to visit to, to he was taking him to the next church from our church. And um, that man ended up spending, he came up to our house. He drove two hours one way to our house on a Friday night and we invited both couples and um, only the one couple would come. And, and the man told them that, you know, we told him everything about the church and he said definitely it was a cult. And, and, and um, when we ran into him in the Christian bookstore, he said, do you know what a miracle it is that you guys ran into me? And we talked about the timing. We talked about our horses getting out and what he had going on in his life and just the timing of him being there in that store. And um, let me, I, I have to back up again. I don't want to do this video over again, so bear with me. Um, my friend's daughter told me that they were praying curses and that was her word they were praying curses on us and um here i was to the almost to, to the point of having a nervous breakdown i i was working really hard on this job and i got it done it was i do upholstery I, I had done a whole bunch of furniture for a funeral home and i had to i had to get it done and i had to get it delivered and um i told randy i'm getting attacked at night so bad and it just, no matter how much I pray, it's not stopping. It's not going away. And I said, you have got, you are the head of this home. You have got to lay your hands on my head and pray so this will stop. So he did. I, I don't think he took me seriously. I, I, I don't, you know, I still don't know what he thought. I, I really think they'd done a number on him and, and, um, he, he was just humoring me at this point. And um, I'm going to stop this video for part three because I don't, I don't know about how this works. And I'll do part three.